Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, got another video for you this week. Um, this one's going to be a follow-up from my uh, three-phase uh, video that I put out last week. Um, I got a ton of questions, so I thought I'd kind of do a part two here and go through the most asked questions that I got. Uh, some of them were just simple. I just emailed back, so those were no big deal, but I got a list here of ones that were asked multiple times. So. Um, hopefully this will answer that uh, answer that for those people and then uh, if there's anybody else um, you know watching um, maybe, maybe it'll help out so uh, with that we'll get started so um, the first one I got in my list is uh, you know why did you choose the American Rotary, uh, Rotary AD 15 and I can I use another brand um, obviously you can use any brand that you want um, the only thing that you need to make sure if you're gonna borrow a borrow a CM a CNC machine is the output needs to be digitally controlled so that the voltage is, uh, you know, within uh, three or five percent on each leg it's coming out. Um, the reason I chose American Rotary, um, I had happened to have been to a, 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 to a trade show that they were at. Um, I talked to the owner of the company, um, you know, was able to look at all of the different models that they had. I liked them. Um, Plus they were on Amazon and I got the free shipping and they had the best price on Amazon. So, um, you know, they do have a good reputation in the business. I like the owner of the company, he seemed like a real good guy. And uh, probably most important, they had the best price on Amazon with free shipping. So um, that's really probably the main reason. So uh, the next question was, uh, you know, do I need a, an electrician to install this? And I'm not sure exactly how to answer that. Um, I know in my area, um, you can pull a permit, do the work yourself, get it inspected, and you know, you're good to go. I'm not sure if it's that way um, you know, everywhere across the country. Um, maybe you have to have an electrician do the work. I'm not sure. Um, and then if you're asking it in the way of, uh, do I need an electrician to dis install this? like? Can a person, you know, do I have the qualifications to do it? I think if you got to answer that question, um, you need to hire an electrician. So I think the best safe advice is, um, you know, hire a licensed electrician to install it. If there's any question, um, uh, you know, if you have any doubt of your ability to do it. So my best advice, hire a licensed electrician. Uh, the next question here is, uh, does the phase converter convert 110 volt to 220 volt three phase? And that answer is no. Um, it simply converts 220 single phase to 220 volt three phase. Um, it uses the two lines that you have coming in and generates a third leg to give you the three phase power. And, th and that's all it does. All right, next one, um, can I run any old uh, non-digital, so to speak, machines on this um, separate or at, the, or at the same time? And yes, you can run anything that needs three phase off the AD15 that I have or any of the digital converters. But, uh, you know, you can run them the same time as you're running a, a CNC machine. You could run a bridge port um, or any other uh, motor that needs uh, three phase power. There's no there's no limit there. The next question was, uh, what other things am I going to need? What other components um, besides the the three phase converter? Um, so it, you're going to need an open spot in your load center uh, is one thing. And you need a breaker in there. Um, and if you look in the, uh, I'll bring this up here. If you look in the manual that comes with the phase converter, and I'm sure any manual that any any company that you buy is going to be the same thing. It's going to tell you based off of, you know, here's the ADX15, AD and ADX15, it requires a 50 amp breaker in your load center. So you're going to need it, with, need it uh, you're going to need to uh, feed it with a 50 amp breaker. And also in here, it's going to tell you, go back a page, the wire size that you need to input to the phase converter from your load center. So in my case, it was a number eight wire. Um, you're also going to need wire, obviously, from um, the phase converter out to your machine. 
and that's also listed in here under wire size and it um, depends on how long a run you have uh, mine was over 50 feet so you have to go up the next size so you're gonna need wire to feed it a wire to feed your machine um, I installed as you recall from the other video a breaker panel or another three-phase load center um, if you're not gonna do that obviously you don't need that panel and a breaker um, probably should some, put some type of disconnect switch at the back of your machine. If you're gonna wire it direct, um, you know, I put the plugs in so you, could, you can disconnect it easy. Um, you know, you would need those things. And I'll put a link, I'll put links to the stuff that I used in the description so you can easily just, you know, glance up there and see some of the things that you're gonna need besides, um, you know, just the phase converter. Um, the other question, uh, another one of the questions I got quite a bit was, hey, where did you get that transformer? And uh, is it really required for the machine? And uh, in, the, in the case of the SILE, it comes with it um, and it is required. It takes your 220 volt uh, three phase in and it spits out uh, 380 plus volt three phase to run the machine, the SILE X7 with the um, Siemens controller or the Syntec controller, use 380 volts. The LNC controller is a 220 machine and you wouldn't be paying any attention to, or 220 single face, so you wouldn't be paying any attention to, you know, any of these videos anyway, so. Um, next one was, is uh, how noisy, how noisy is the idler motor? And, um, it, you know, they make noise, there's no question. The, uh, the reason I have mine um, in the other room, so to speak, or away from where the machines are, is so you don't have to listen to them. Um, they're not, um, you know, they're not terribly bad, um, but it can get annoying, especially if you're not machining and you're, you know, working on a drawing or something in between, uh, you know, you know up updating a drawing to load onto the machine to run. If it's sitting right next to you, it might be annoying. Um, you know, that said, if you have a small space and you have to put it behind the machine, when the machine's on and running, you would not be able to hear the phase converter. Um, you know, larger, larger units, they tend to put the idler motor outside in a weatherproof, con um, you know, container uh, to, just to keep the noise away. It, it's not unbearable. I, you know, I've worked with a lot of buddies that have them um, in their in their small garage. It, it's not the end of the world, but they, they do make noise, and it can be painful at some at some times, right? So, and then uh, the last one that I have written down here that was asked quite a bit is how expensive is it to run that idler motor? Um, you know, the whole time. You know, usually, like when I come out here in the shop in the morning, I just hit the button and have it on whether I'm going to use the machine right away or not um, because the cost really is is not much. Um, it's about 20 to 25 cents if you do the math depending on what you know you're paying per kilowatt hour in your area. Um, you know under load uh, under heavy cuts heavy load it could be a little bit higher than that um, but roughly about 20 to 25 cents an hour to run so you know, you can run it all day for a couple of bucks. And uh, for me, it's, it's uh, more convenient than walking back and forth and turning it on and off, restarting the machine all the time, which it's not good for it. It's, it's better to just turn it on, let it idle, um, and have it there when you need it. So, so that's really all I got. Um, hopefully this helps. Um, I, I did, like I said in the beginning, I got a ton of questions, way more than I was expecting. So. Maybe I missed the mark a little bit there or wasn't as clear as it should have been. So um, anyways, um, thanks for watching to the end. Hope you hope this helps and uh, we'll see you in the next one.